correct interpretation of ancient texts. This is very serious issue. Now, ancient texts are not as easy like that you find a science book today, it very clearly defines everything. I tell you one of my personal experience. Long time back it was, I think 1995, I was spending some time in Germany and one of my friend there, a senior friend, colleague, he was, he happened to be an IIT Kharagpur student of civil engineering, the first batch, 1956. He was an old resident of Aachen. So every day, every week, he used to give me his uh, a magazine called Desh, published uh, by Ananda Parvishas, and it's a very well-known magazine, weekly magazine it used to be. So he was uh, a subscriber of that and whenever he finishes, he used to give it to me. And obviously, being in Germany, you know, you will always love to go through those things. So I used to read. So one such issue I got and I, I found an article. I forgot the name of the author. The topic was Ishwar, Vigyan and Chetana. Very interesting. Let me see. So I started reading. It's a serious article and published in a magazine like this. So it should have certain degree of respectability and authenticity also. So I found that that article contains that we had information about everything. He says the Mahabharata describes the orbital motion of the planets, including Earth, etc., and he gives some reference. Then he said that our ancient sages, they knew about the Big Bang Theory, they give some effort. I said, how is it? And I looked at the reference. Reference says, Brahma Sutra this and this. So I have, I, as I mentioned, I am not an expert in ancient texts. So I said, okay, when I go back, come back to India, to Kanpur, my colleague and neighbor's wife was a very senior professor of Sanskrit. She may be able to help. So after I came back to Kanpur, I went to uh, Professor G. Kalal's home and asked Karunaji, his wife, because do you have, she used to keep all such ancient texts. Brahma Sutra was there. She said, can I see the Brahma Sutra such and such, uh, volume such and such. She was very happy. He said that Dr. Ghosh is interested in ancient texts, you know. So, uh, I am telling you, this is a psychological problem. You know. uh, if a, a, a professor of IIT looks into some ancient Sanskrit text, they think, oh, it is a great thing. No, it should not be. Because this is a divide which has been created. That is very bad. So I asked her, so she found out, yes, I saw. You know what I found? That particular sutra, Brahma Sutra is all cryptic thing also. Kampanath. Now I realized that Kampanath has been interpreted as the Big Bang Theory. So, that is the problem. I think you cannot convince a general scientist of the world that component is Big Bang. It is somebody's own uh, uh, wishful thinking it could be. So, actually, uh, <laughs> what happened then, uh, Professor Misra, she was a professor, she asked me, oh, Ghoshab, you are interested in this? Why are you interested in this thing? I said, you know, I read such and such article in this uh, magazine. When I was in Germany, I wanted to verify. Then I find this. Then she immediately was very upset. So this is the problem. So this divide we have to. So the correct interpretation of ancient texts is a serious issue. I can interpret anything. I can interpret component as bank, big bang theory. You know? So there I have nothing to say about it. And this makes you are watching those who are doing studies, their <coughs> results, they are always look with a degree of suspicion. They are not taken just uh, like that, you know, they said, oh, it is somebody's interpretation, it can be all useless. Bunk.